Aloha, my name is Dave Mitchell. I'm one of the owners of Employee Assistance of the Pacific, Hawaii's largest EAP. In addition to providing employee assistance program services to over 200 companies across Hawaii, we also provide substance abuse professional or SAP services to many of them that hire safety sensitive employees covered under Department of Transportation regulations. The DOT has several different regulations for each mode to protect the public from the risks of having an impaired truck driver under FMCSA regulations, or an airline pilot under FAA regulations, or a public transit operator under FTA, or a railroad conductor under FRA, or the operators of a Coast Guard regulated ship or yacht, or a pipeline operator under PHMSA, Nobody wants to be at risk of these safety sensitive employees being impaired while working. So DOT guidelines provide for testing and treatment for those impaired employees. The FMCSA recently started what they call a clearinghouse, a web-based platform to track all violations for CDL drivers. No other mode uses the clearinghouse at this time. Everyone involved in a driver's drug or alcohol violation enters information or uses information in the clearinghouse. When a driver tests positive for drugs or alcohol, the employer enters this information into the system. A substance abuse professional or SAP then enters information and the employer also must track all drivers annually in the system to make sure they don't have a violation in the system. The system became fully operational in 2020 and at the end of 2020, FMCSA shared results of their first year using the system, and I wanted to share those results with you. First of all, everyone needed to register in the system, and most people have. Almost 1.6 million driver accounts were created in 2020, and 197,000 employer accounts. Service agents that manage all or part of an employer's drug and alcohol testing program or a consortium slash third party administrator, they had over 14,000 of them register, 2,700 medical review officers and 3,000 substance abuse professionals all registered in the clearinghouse by the end of 2020. As FMCSA gave employers until the end of 2020 to query all drivers, they currently employ and to query any new employees with CDLs, most people waited until the end of the year to use the system. But by the end of 2020, over 4.2 million queries were made into the clearinghouse. In the year 2020, over 56,000 drivers violated DOT drug or alcohol regulations. Most of these, over 28,000, were in pre-employment pre tests. Just over half of the positive tests were these pre-employment tests. There were over 20,000 positive random tests, 2,200 post-accident tests, 1,500 tests due to actual knowledge of an offense, 1,200 positive follow-up tests, 1,100 positive reasonable suspicion tests, and almost 700 positive return to duty tests. Of these 55,000 positive drug tests, there are, here are the almost 56,000 drugs they tested positive for. And I'm going to enlarge this so you can see it a little better. The extra 1,000 people is a result of people who tested positive for more than one of these drugs. Most, over 29,000, were in for THC or marijuana or Pakalolo. 10,000 were for amphetamines including meth and ecstasy, almost 8,000 were for cocaine, over 5,600 were for the various opioids, 137 were for PCP, and almost 2,400 were too dilute to register, so counted as a positive test, and 43 were for drugs that were not identified. If a driver has a drug or alcohol violation, they must be removed from safety sensitive functions, including operating a commercial motor vehicle, until they complete a return to duty process through a DOT qualified substance abuse professional or SAP. We assign the case to one of the 15 SAPs in our Hawaii network, all of whom have been trained to handle these challenging cases. The SAP interviews and assesses the employee, 
reviews test results, and makes recommendations for education or for treatment. The employee completes the education or treatment, then returns for another interview with the SAP. The SAP then informs the employer that the employee has complete, complied with their recommendations, is ready to be evaluated by the employer for a return to duty drug or alcohol test, and then they send the employer a testing schedule to follow for the next up to five years. The employer sends the employee for an observed return to duty test, and if the test is negative, the employee may then return to safety sensitive duties. What's interesting to me about the 2020 statistics is that as of January 1st, 2021, only 6,513 employees had completed the process and could return to work. The other 45,000 cannot. And here's a breakout of where those 45,000 people were. I'll enlarge that for you again. Here's a breakout of where they are in their return to duty status. Most of them, over 34,000, that can't return to work yet, haven't done anything. 7,000 have completed their SAP process, but still haven't had their return to duty test. Many of them are probably looking for someone to hire them. 2,000 have started the SAP process and seen the SAP once. 1,000 have designated a SAP in the clearinghouse but haven't seen them yet and 500 of them have either sent a request to the clearinghouse for a SAP or have had their SAP request denied. It's important to remember that half of these positive tests were for pre-employment tests. So over 28,000 people failed a pre-employment drug or alcohol test. So basically took themselves out of the job market. There probably isn't a great motivator here for these prospective drivers to complete their SAP process, and there is a reduced chance of companies willing to hire someone with a DOT violation and up to five years of testing ahead of them that the company pays for. That said, there are certainly companies in Hawaii, because of our limited job market of people, to hire these people. But often, um, Often they just don't follow through as they have to pay for the SAP and pay for their education or their treatment out of pocket. So it's easier for them just to work elsewhere. What is new because of the clearinghouse is that before the clearinghouse, they would just go to another employer and apply there and lie about their violation history. Now all future employers have to check them out in the clearinghouse and they can't put them behind the wheel until they have fulfilled their SAP process. So what's the impact of the clearinghouse so far? As this article in overdrive.com pointed out, tens of thousands of drivers with drug violations are likely to leave trucking for good. The article goes on to say that 40,000 or so drivers have been culled from the market or aren't allowed to use their CDL. And probably thousands more have exited the workforce because they don't think they will pass a drug test. So that's the bad news for drivers who are using drugs or alcohol inappropriately. The trucking industry was already impacted greatly due to the coronavirus pandemic, and this is not helping the industry. It's harder than ever for companies to find safe drivers. In addition, carriers face new fines if they don't comply with the clearinghouse rules, or if they don't run annual queries into their drivers, or on each newly hired driver or if they knowingly put someone on the road with a DOT violation. The good news here is that there are fewer impaired drivers on the road, so we're all safer than we were a year ago. It's harder than it was before for a drug abusing or alcohol abusing driver to find or keep a job unless they get some help. And the good news is that help is readily available even here in Hawaii. We have DOT qualified SAPs across the state that can help. We have a variety of ways we can help in this area. Individuals who need a SAP can call us and pay for this service themselves. Unfortunately, as can be seen from the 50% of people who don't have a job and fail a test, they often can't afford to do so. Companies can call us to arrange for a fee-for-service contract that covers their employees who need this service. 
This gets them back on the road more quickly and removes obstacles to getting the help they need. And we can also help companies by serving all of their employees with a robust EAP plan that also covers SAP services at no additional costs. Employees can obtain counseling for a wide variety of issues with our 75 counselors across the state, as well as obtain free legal assistance for non-work related issues, free financial consultation, elder care assistance, ID theft, rec recovery help, and mediation services. So there's a lot of ways an EAP can help the entire company and the entire workforce. We serve over 200 companies across the Hawaiian Islands, include, including many with CDL drivers. Over the years, we have assisted over 1,100 Hawaii employees who have violated DOT drug and alcohol regulations by serving as their SAP. So we're quite familiar with the needs of these employees as well as the companies that hire them. In addition, we have served over 500 employees who have violated non-DOT company drug and alcohol policies through a similar process that DOT employees go through. We're here to help across the Hawaiian Islands, so give us a call anytime we can help. On behalf of Employee Assistance of the Pacific, this is Dave Mitchell. I want to thank you, mahalo for your time, and aloha.